Hey, it's Charlie Craven, and I'm going to tie for you today a rubber leg hair's ear. Um, and this is a you know kind of variation on the standard theme, but uh, um, uh, the point at which to sort of illustrate that uh, even with some of these old school patterns, you can make some variations on them and uh, create uh, entirely different flies. And uh, um, this version is just a, a wonderful green drake imitation. Um, with the with the rubber legs and uh, um, I'll show you kind of in that color variation how I'm going to go about this. Um, so what I've got in my vise is a size 12 5262 um, with a 1 8 inch black tungsten bead and this is a, uh, a jet black which is kind of the shiny black and I'm going to take and add some lead wire to this and I think this is 15 thousandths but I'm going to make 10 or 12 turns five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yeah about twelve and then I'll break those ends off and I'll shove that lead up into the bead you can kind of use it to help center the bead so he stays square on the hook there there we go and now I'm gonna start with some olive done a dot thread this is unithread and a dot all have done. Um, and I'll start this just behind those lead wraps, and I'll build a little thread dam, creeping up to the diameter of the thread wraps or the lead wraps, I should say, and then wrap forward over the lead and back again. And trim that tag end out, and then come all the way back to the bend. Now you can make a uh, much more specific kind of split tail kind of thing on this fly, but uh, um, it's awfully hard to argue with just a clump of hen fibers. Um, it's a good durable material and uh, you know comes in a, a pile of colors that are appropriate. So I'm going to take <clears throat> a CDL hen feather here and I'm going to even the tips up. So you can see I've kind of pulled those out uh, from the stem until the tips have become even. And then I'll grab those and peel the feather away and just kind of roll that into a clump like so. Um, and I want this tail to be about three quarters of a shank length long, a little on the long side. Um, green drakes kind of have that long, wispy, um, you know, scorpion-like tail. Um, so I'm going to leave a little bit longer tail sticking out there. I'll tie that in right at the bend. And then come forward over those butt ends, just about up to the lead, and trim that out. So nothing, nothing fancy there. Um, now for the rib, um, Gosh, lots of things you could use here. You could use a piece of flash boo. You could use um, crystal flash. I'm just going to use plain old copper wire. Um, I don't want this fly to be too shiny. Um, so I'm going to take a piece of small copper wire, and I'll tie it in along the near side of the hook here. And come back over it all the way to the base of the tail, and I'll just clip that in my material spring so it's held back out of the way. Um, now, you know, I might, I might give you a full dress version here. I'm sort of free, free balling this. Um, I'm just kind of going along as I go without a lot of warm up. Um, but I'm going to take a piece of, uh, uh, one one hundredth flash of mirage. So a thin little piece of flash here. I'm going to show you how to make a flashback over the abdomen. Um, and we'll carry this through to the thorax as well. So I want to tie that strand in on top of the hook, right at the center of its length. And I'll fold the two ends together and wrap back over it right to the base of the tail as well. And you want to make sure you get right down to that last bit so there's no thread showing behind it. Uh, that step is, of course, optional. You don't have to put that in there, but I figure I might as well show you. Um, now I'm going to use some olive brown hair's mask dubbing. Um, this is from Nature Spirit. This is HMD8 is the product code, if that helps you. Um, and I've been using a lot of this. You guys are probably tired of, tired of hearing about it. Um, but this is a, a really good color for a green drake nymph. So I'm going to start to dub this on, and fairly thickly. Uh, you know, I'm tying a size 12, um, but also we're tying a green drake. Um, so we want a, a fairly stout-bodied fly. And I am hesitant to ever say, you know, use more dubbing. Um, you know, I teach enough classes where I know that's the kiss of death if I ever say that. Um, but it is more dubbing than you would use on a small fly. Um, but it's just the right amount of dubbing to use on a big fly. So um, let that be your guide. This piece of wire is just going to fight me. There we go. Got him out of my way. So I'm going to get my first turn of dubbing back here at the bin. And I'm going to fatten him up just a little bit. I want him to start 
<clears throat> excuse me, start a little thicker. And then I'll work forward. And you can see I'll take a couple turns forward and one back, a couple turns forward and one back to kind of build that robust taper up to just short of my bead. Now I'm going to pick up my flash and I'm going to pull them just slightly to my near side and tie it down. And that is to allow for the thread torque that's going to straighten it out. Um, now in this case I'm going to counter wrap my wire. So I'm going to come around under the hook and just evenly space these turns over the dubbing and the flash, right up to my starting point. And then I'll tie my wire off. Get that anchored down with several tight turns. And then helicopter the end out. There we go. Um, now, the reason I didn't cut this flash beforehand is as I wrap that, that wire through there, <clears throat> that actually shortens that flash down. And sometimes you can pull it out if you cut it real, real flush. Um, so I didn't want to tie that <clears throat> or cut that off ahead of time. Now I'll fold that in back and then I'll cut those off. And now that's all anchored in good and tight. Now I want to make sure that my flash is centered on top. And if it's not, you can kind of give it a little twist and line it up where it's centered right down the center of the fly. And you can see that's a nice bright spot on the, on the abdomen. And then I'm going to overlap my thread back to, you know, realistically it's almost 50-50. Um, that's darn near, gosh, 55-45, something like that. Um, pretty far back. We're, we're kind of accommodating our bead. Um, green drake nymphs are uh, a pretty robust little bug, um, so we want a, a thicker thorax on this and a longer thorax. And at this point, I'm going to tie in our wing case. Now, it just occurred to me, I said I was going to show you how to put a flashback on this as well, um, just to continue this through. So I'm going to grab another strand of that same flash, and I'll tie it in. I could have left that piece in, had I been thinking, I could have left that piece in and doubled it back as well, but um, you'll probably forget to. Don't act like you won't. You know you will. Um, so I just doubled that back and went on about my business like it never happened. Um, hey, at least I was honest. Alright, now for the wing case, I'm going to use uh, turkey tail feather. And what I want to do here is, uh, we're going to put some resin on this. So I'm going to cut a strip that is about twice the hook gap. So a nice wide slip from a turkey tail. And I want to cut the tip end square. And what I'll do here is I'm going to fold this in half so that it's stacked. So I've got outside on both sides. And I'll cut that in square again. So that is the tip end that I've got there. And I'm going to lay this in on top of the hook and catch it, draw that down behind the bead, and anchor it in place. So what I've got is a double thickness wing case. Um, and this is helpful uh, for flies like what we're about to do here with, the, uh, with resin on the wing case. If you're using a natural material, um, if you do it with a double thickness, it keeps the resin from running into the dubbing underneath it. And I do want to make sure, you can see I lifted that up, I want to make sure that I've got no thread showing behind that that wing case. Um, so essentially what I've done is tied in two wing cases. Um, it's just folded on one side. Give you a view here if I actually split him for you. This is not necessary. I just want to do this to show you, but I've got two wing cases. All right, so now I'm going to start to dub the thorax. Um, and there's a couple little tricks here. Um, not really so much tricks on the dubbing, but um, I used to tie these for Roaring Fork Anglers back in the day, and man, I went through all kinds of machinations to get the get the legs in place, and uh, I actually learned the right way to do this, you know, 25 years later, um, tying John Barr's Jumbo Johns. Um, so I'm going to show you what I learned. Um, now, you can see there's a lot of bulk already built up in our thorax, um, so we don't need a pile of dubbing here, um, but I've still got a little neck here behind the bead. But I'm going to start to build my thorax from front to back. I want to come right up to the base of that wing case. And I like this dubbing to be fairly tight here. And I'm going to end my dubbing with my thread hanging in the center of the thorax. Get that crazy one out of there. So my thread's hanging in the middle of the thorax. And at this point, 
I'm going to take a strand of, um, in this case, it's brown super floss, uh, super floss, flexi floss, same stuff that you use for, uh, um, oh, like a Pat's rubber legs. So I'm going to take a strand of this and I'm going to tie it in along the far side with a couple of turns. And I'll take another strand and tie it in again right in the middle of the thorax with a couple turns. You can kind of square those up on either side like so. And we've got just that little bit of thread tie down there. So now I'm going to take just another little pinch of dubbing and you want to apply this much more thinly. Um, this is just going to cover our thread work there. And I'll cover that tie down and then use that last turn to kind of get up here behind the bead. So you can see what we've done there as well. Wish I'd have known that a long time ago. Um, I used to tie those in first and then try to dub around them and it just took forever. Um, not the smartest way to go about it. So now I'm going to take my wing case, both strands, both layers. And I'm going to come up and over and you got to kind of want to miss your legs. And I'm going to hold the thread up with the, with the wing case. Um, you can see that's elevating the thread. And then I'll pull straight down on the thread. And that'll help to center the wing case so everything's anchored in place on top, right, square on top. And we've got a nice, thick wing case there. And while I'm at it, I'll pick up my two strands of flash and pull them right through the center. And you can see if you leave those legs long, they'll just sort of pop out of the way as you go around. So that flash comes right down the center as well. Um, now I'll fold that flash back, and catch it with a couple turns, and then I can come in and trim the, the wing case out, and again, very tips of the scissors. Try to get a nice clean, that wasn't the closest cut I could have made. Nice clean tie off there. Um, here, I'll show you. I think that's actually showing pretty well on the camera. I'll show you a trick here. Um, so you can see these little stubs that are sticking out over the bead. I'll show you a way to clean that up. Let's get that flash out of there in the meantime. Um, so what I'll do here, so I'm going to fold those legs back. Let me turn this a bit so you can see what I do. But see how I can direct these wraps up in front of those stubs and use the thread to push them back and sort of bury them down in there? Um, now, we're going to dub in there um, yet, so we've got some another chance to kind of cover that up. Um, but that cleaned that, that uh, tie-off up, uh, up outside the bead there. Um, so now I'm going to take some medium... Solares and a dubbing needle. And I'm going to take just a little drop of it here. I should have let this spin sitting upside down. My bottle's almost empty. Here it comes. I'm going to take a bead of this medium Solares and I'm going to put it down on the wing case and sort of push it in. And I want to work it in. To the top of that wing case. I'm trying to keep it off the thread and you want to make sure you get from edge to edge nice and clean. And you can see there's a couple little, um, you can see them, gosh right, where is he? Right there, that little gob. Um, if you get that on the fur, don't worry about it. Um, I'll show you a, a trick to get rid of that. The last thing you want to do is touch it when it's wet. Um, so I've got that sort of little swelled wing case on there. And I'll hit that with my UV lamp. And again, on off from a distance is the best way to cure UV resin. Um, so I just kind of flash the light onto it. And what that does is cures the resin much more slowly um, than holding it right down on top. Um, if you found that your resin comes off very easily, that's why. Um, so a much slower cure until we get that yep, all cured up. All right, now um, you can see that little gob. Once we've cooked that, you can grab that and pull it right off. It'll come right off. It doesn't smear. Um, if you uh, tried to touch that when it's wet, you just goo everything up and nobody wants that. All right, so now to finish this, <clears throat> finish this fly off, I'm going to take just another little pinch of dubbing, and I'm going to build a collar behind the bead. Um, and again, this is a tiny little pinch. This is not going to be much. Um, but this is to, to help cover that tie off um, and give us a much cleaner overall thorax area. <clears throat> so I'll pull those legs back out of the way. And I want to sort of taper this up. You can see that was only like three turns. And I'll end with the thread just behind the bead. And then come in 
and we'll finish just off the back edge of the bead. Cinch that down in there, nick that thread out, kind of get my legs positioned where I want them. I don't like that strand of Antron right there. Now these legs, I want to trim the back ones just about to the bend of the hook. And the front ones are about that same length. You could sort of fold those back and use that as a gauge. You can see where a good sharp pair of scissors comes in handy. But really creepy little robust thorax on that bug. Give you a little better light here. And then I do like to come in with a piece of Velcro. And this is just the hook side of Velcro. Um, and I'll pick some of this dubbing out along the thorax. Um, and I don't go crazy with it. I don't want to don't want to tear the whole fly apart. Um, but I do want to shag that thorax up a bit. And you can kind of run back and forth and up and down on the sides. Um, just to, to bleed that thorax up a bit. You could even come back on the on the abdomen and continue to do that. You know, green drakes do have pretty big gills on their abdomen, so you can shag them up and make them quite a bit more buggy. And that is a rubber leg flashback hairs here. Um, you know, all the bells and whistles on that sucker. Um, throw in a soft tackle on there and gosh, you got about everything you could, I could think that you'd want to add to a fly. Um, there we go. A little better view. So you can see that flash down the center, big swollen wing case, very prominent legs. Fun little buck. Um, and the nice thing about this is when you're out fishing and you're catching a bunch of fish and somebody's fishing a, uh, you know, super duper uh, modern blah, 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 blah. Um, and they say, what are you catching them on? And you say, oh, a hair's ear. Um, that's one of my favorite things. Nobody even carries these things anymore. But you should. Um, I do. And they work. Um, so there's my little tip for the day. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Charlie Craven. I think I'm going to go maybe have a cup of coffee now. I don't feel like I'm ramped up enough for the day. Um We'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching. Charlie Craven. Hit like and subscribe. Come to Charlie Slybox, buy a bunch of stuff. Um, this new camera wasn't cheap. Help me out. Thanks, guys. Take care.